Hi guys and welcome to another Texas Flycaster fly tying video. You know I'm pretty enthusiastic about these. This is the second one in two years. So let's get started. The seducer is a pattern invented by Homer Rhodes back in the 1940s and is the quintessential fly that is tied just using feathers on a hook. Um, the way I like to start these videos nowadays is to go ahead and get our colors correct. So let's take a look at that just so you'll know that the colors are accurate and we'll move on from there to a 60 degree jig hook it's one I sell in my fly shop on texasflycaster.com this is size 2 so it's a uh, pretty large size but it works well for demonstration I use that a lot for clouds or minnows too and guarantees they run hook up we also have a fluorescent red thread that we'll be using today for the fly there's an infinite number of colors you can use. Medium bead chain. That's really important and also another thing you don't find on these flies. That is a stiff hackle there for the tail. It won't foul if you use something really stiff, but you can't use that for the body because it's just too stiff to wrap around. Now we've got some flashaboo here that is a thinner cut, but I use only about three or four of those in making the fly and the tail. There is the body feather right there it's a lot softer a lot more flexible because all you're doing is wrapping around the shank of the hook so it has to be something really flexible and for the head basically we're going with a red um, cheap hackle there it's you know hen hackle all right here we go with thread just laying down thread base here and you can see that I like to really torque things on you can see how that hook moves and I'll talk more about that later but Essentially what we're going to do is lay down a good thread base that covers the hook and makes it so that the uh, feathers lay and hold nicely on the actual hook shank. Excuse me while I have another sip of beer. I'm going to cut off that little piece of tag end right there. Moving right along, what we're going to do is go back to the front, go ahead and put our bead chain eyes in. And when we do that, the first thing you do when you put bead chain eyes or any kind of eyes on any kind of fly, you want those very first, very first crossovers to be really hard and tight. You can see how the hook, I have to hold the hook just to keep from bending the hook. I use a Dyna King vise and it really holds the hooks well. You can bend the hook pretty easily, but you don't want to do that. So hold on to it and those first wraps around the eyes set the stage for all the rest and make it so that uh, you know it's it's in tight extremely tight just with the uh, the thread we're gonna go ahead and take some glue and right now I'm using this uh, it's called loon outdoors company and it's water-based head cement and it's really easy to use it's almost like Elmer's glue or something but it actually works really well it penetrates really well into the thread. I like it a lot. It has no smell either. Alrighty, gonna wipe off the excess right there. Nice thing about a rotating vise is you can turn things around, you hit them from the top and the bottom with glue or whatever you need to do and then move on. And I hope that's what we're gonna do. When you're putting in these tail feathers, you want to go ahead and strip away some of that excess feather. That's that soft, kind of downy stuff. And make sure these lay right on top of the hook shank. This is your tying in your tail right here. And you only need two feathers, and you just you horiz you just oppose those to each other so they face in towards each other. And that'll keep the feathers from splaying out and being kind of cattywampus. I do tie them where they go the opposite directions when I'm trying to imitate frog pattern or actually it's just a seducer but it has kind of a frog feel to it and I'll use those in early spring when the frogs are out this is a fly that it runs really shallow just below the surface and because of the way it's designed it has a uh, it moves a lot of water you can see my my tail was a little bit low so I went in there and, and, and kind of cinched it up by running one line of thread underneath it and pulling the tail up it needs to run exactly parallel to the hook shank This is a time for you to have another sip of beer if you have one handy. 
Do not stare at that spinning <laughs> bobbin. We're only going to use anywhere from two to four little pieces of flashaboo. Like I said earlier, I think this one's a little bit narrower, thinner cut, and it works really well. This is a sparse fly from beginning to end. There's just not a lot to it. It ties really fast, takes very few materials, and you can do an infinite, infinite number of colors. I think when Homer Rose designed this, you know, and if you think in terms of the old plugs, they were usually red and white. I think this is really a good basic color to start with if you're tying the uh, bass seducer, just red nose and, and white body, and uh, give it a go. I also have great luck with black and black and purple, and the uh, head is almost always finished with red, even if it's a black fly or any other color. I like having red at the front end. So now we're getting ready to polymer in the uh, the body here. I like to put some glue on there just to seal everything. These flies take a lot of abuse from bass. It's really kind of almost like an attractor pattern as far as attracting bass, which it's not really hard to attract a bass, but they really go nuts on this fly. So you want it to be a tough fly or else it'll just get chomped within the first two or three fish. And we started, of course, with the narrow end of the feather, and the, the body gets bigger as it goes forward. And what that does is creates a wedge-like shape that moves a lot of water underwater. And uh, I think that's key to the performance of this fly is, is the fact that it actually is creating a whole lot of commotion under the water surface. So the two things so far that make this fly so different are the bead chain eyes and the jig hook and both of those are, are really you know creations that enhance the, the ability for this fly to run hook side up and you don't have to start worrying or, or think about tying in any kind of a uh, any kind of a weed guard or anything like that well we did our locking in uh, turns with the thread and now we're gonna go ahead and put the red in there we're almost done with this fly it's really just about it's one of the fastest flies you can tie I'm moving kinda slow here <laughs> because it's a demonstration but it's no problem to tie quite a few of these in one sitting and um, if you've done it a dozen times you'll never forget how to do it there's as we palmer that over you just want to stay behind the eyes if you, and if you feel like it but you can also go ahead and palmer all the way to the front if you need to just remember to uh, try to avoid letting that thread drop down the the uh, the, the bend of that uh, 60 degree shank once we get under here I like to tie this off from the bottom which is actually going to be the top we're looking at the bottom of the fly as the fish would see it if he was directly under it so we do two, two forward and two backs, and that locks it in. Then we're going to cut off the excess and, and finish the fly. It's one of those flies that doesn't have a lot of material, and I consider it more of like a transparent fly that, that, that you can see through real easily. And I, I just really believe that the uh, commotion it creates in, in the water movement is a uh, key to the whole thing. And as we rotate this guy, I think you're going to take a look at it here and it's going to be rotated around. <clears throat> you want to, uh, if you get a chance, if you got some of that uh, stem of the bead chain sticking out, go ahead and take your finest wire, uh, wire cutters and see that sticking out right there? Just, just cut that off because that can fray your leader. So you don't want that on there. It's on the top right there. There it is, the bass seducer. I hope you enjoy using this fly as much as I have. It's a really effective fly. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or compliments, feel free to contact us at texasflycaster.com.